the role of pain and struggle in our life. I strongly believe that you need pain and you need struggle in order to evolve spiritually. And I have had that, of course, probably everybody has had that. But I came to the realization, and this is what I want for me. I don't. I think you can grow spiritually in uh, joy, in dancing, in singing, and especially in awe. There is. I've never felt so connected spiritually with whatever it is you can call it the divinity, whatever you want to call it. Then when I'm in front of a sunset, you look at the sunset and you feel transposed and you forget about yourself or connecting. For me, especially with animals, because I'm, I'm very connected with animals, so just looking at a beautiful animal doing so, and just looking at the eyes of an animal <clears throat> and feeling the unity that you have with animals, with nature, with, with people, of course, but that's, <laughs> that's the last thing. <laughs> and my question is, I don't think that we really need pain and struggle to grow. I think we're addicted to misery as humans, and I think we create it. I see myself, something goes perfectly well, and I look for excuses to be miserable. Like, I found myself, um, I lost my, one of my cats one year ago, and I'm still mourning for that, but I have another one. So the other day, I was looking at my cat, and I thought, oh shit, I, I, can't, I can't even bear the thought of this cat dying. It's not dying. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I putting myself through that, you know? I think as humans, we have trained ourselves to think that we need to be miserable. We need to be in pain. And I don't think that is necessary. I think it's true. I mean, if you have something painful happening to you and you get over it, you're stronger. There's no doubt about it. And maybe you have a different perspective. But is that really necessary? That we agree. So, so we will speak to you a little bit, dear one, about a great grace and beauty that is over your life, and that is this. First of all, you have been given the gift of dance, which is when you dance, you are just your soul. It is your soul that is dancing through your body. And what a gift that is, you see. Uh, uh, and this vessel can relate for when she would sing at times and she would get off the stage after having sung and think to herself I've never felt more in my skin more me, more who I was put on the earth to be than I did just then when I was singing however the mistake came when she equated that with having been on a platform you see but uh, back to your gift, you see, this is a, a great gift that you have in this gift. You are who you are. You are your soul. When we talk about the soul, we are talking about the part of you that is eternal, that existed before you came to be in your mother's womb and that will still be existing when you die and your body is cast away. And so it is your soul, my dear, that loves to dance. And your soul was dancing before you arrived in this incarnation and it will still be dancing when you're gone. And this is what your beautiful soul does. And yes, you have also found connection to your soul through nature and through animals. And there is a true purity there. For animals are not, they, they're, they're, they're not covered up by egoic demands, you see. And so these three things have been a great comfort to you and they have been your spiritual path. You see, we are not about temples and statues and rituals. A real religion is whatever gives you life, whatever allows you to be your soul without all the trappings of the shoulds and shouldn'ts and should-haves and so on. 
And you mentioned also about about fear. You see, whenever we get out of the moment and 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 forecast fear, forecast the future, then 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 we have strayed from the light of our soul. And the worry and fear comes from a lack of understanding about the beauty of your precious animals which go on into new incarnations. And because of the love and relationship that they have with you in their new incarnation, there is ever so much more life and consciousness for them. And so really it is a time of loss, yes, and also rejoicing. Now, so part of this beginning of this spiritual journey is understanding the difference between your soul and your personality. So let us give you a few words because because one of the things that was difficult for this vessel in, when entering the spiritual journey is, is there were lots of lingo and words thrown around and she didn't know for sure what they meant. And this reminded her, her, her of being a Christian when she had to learn a certain lingo in order to get it, whatever it was that was going on. And, and so this, this can be a barrier for people. So, so let us clarify. Your soul, as we explain, being the part of you that is eternal, that existed before you came in your mother's womb and still be here when you're gone and goes on forever and ever and ever. And it is the part of you that is like God, is the part of you that is a part of God, is the part of you in which God, the Spirit of God, lives and dwells and has its being inside of you, in your soul, your spirit. It is the part of you that animates your body, and when it leaves, your body will have no animation. It will be lifeless and cold. You see, this is the miracle of being a human. And so your soul, your soul, when you look into the eyes of a baby, they are not judging you, my dear. They are not looking at you and thinking, wow, she is at least 15 pounds overweight. They are not looking at you and thinking, anything about you but only receiving the love emanating from your eyes you see and they are simply observing 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 they are almost in a hypnotic state of receiving information of what a life is alike their soul is still very pure and not covered up by the shoulds and should haves and ought to's A baby doesn't think, oh, damn, I should have gotten up an hour earlier. I'm going to be late. Right? No, they just wake up when they wake up and fall asleep when they fall asleep and eat when they're hungry. They just live. They just exist. They breathe in. They breathe out. They are pure soul. But that gets trained out of us and what comes of that, of that growing up and that domestication is our personality. Or we will say ego, personality, individuality. Ego sometimes has a negative connotation, but... So here we are, now we're waking up. Our personality, our ego is kind of running the show and it kind of sucks for us. It's not that fulfilling. And our soul is weeping and sad and angry inside. So how do we get things right? Well, we begin by recognizing what is soul and what is ego. What is soul and what is personality? And then we let the soul take the helm and the personality needs to come under, support, serve the soul. So here are some ways you can recognize the ego in yourself.
as our sister said, the ego needs to have a problem, a conflict, a dilemma. The ego is addicted to two problems. And if there isn't an immediate problem, the ego will invent one in the mind to natter and worry and noodle about. So the ego needs to have a conflict or a problem. And when there isn't one, the ego will create one or invent one. And so when the ego is in play and needs to have this problem, a problem, it might manifest like blaming or criticizing or judging because there needs to be a problem. If there's no problem, the ego doesn't have a job. And that means he's not that important. So the ego needs to have a problem. And yes, is addicted to, to pain and suffering. And yes, this this can become a literal physical addiction. And this gentleman here can help with that. And this is why people have anxiety attacks in which they are, 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 are overwrought with an inordinate amount of fear that is not compatible with the situation at hand. In other words, they're more fearful and their visceral physical response is out of doesn't doesn't equal the 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 impetus so the ego needs a problem and a conflict it needs some sort of pain or suffering so that it feels like it has a job and a reason to be active and it wants to be special And, and if someone doesn't make it feel special, then it feels hurt and rejected and abandoned and victimized. So the ego needs to be a victim, needs to create a problem, and needs to feel special. And so it's okay. Let, let your ego do these things, but be, begin to be the observer of it and say, oh, There's my ego. Oh, there it is. And that is your soul. That is your soul waking up. Your soul is the one that says, that sees. Oh, I see. I see that is my mind, my ego, my personality that's not who I really am. 